First thing I have to bring up is Joe Torre got in the Hall of Fame. Great day, right? Your manager. Um, can you give me a couple quick thoughts of what it was like to play for, the, for, for Joe and your relationship with Joe Torre? We start off with you, Derek. Uh, he's, Mr. T's like a second father to me. He's a second father to all of us. He's, he's the reason why we're here today. Um, <laughs> he gave us an opportunity. He trusted us when we were younger and gave us an opportunity to play. So we all wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. George? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing was the way he communicated, you know, to us. Uh, he really was one-on-one -on -one all the time, uh, treated us like we were his kids, uh, a lot of trust in us. Uh, and he said it uh, earlier, he said, even when we were struggling, he still, you know, gave us the confidence that, you know, we could play the next day. And it was a good thing going home, you know, even though you go for four or go for whatever, he, you knew where you were going to be in the, in the lineup. That's a good feeling. Mariana? Joe Torre, his influence on you? What are you talking about? Joe Torre, his influence on you? You know, the closures are always a little slow. The thing is that you have to have that short memory. That's this, why, there's not right? a ninth inning scenario here. Well, it is bigger right than that. When you retiring, anyway? When you leaving? I'm waiting for Derek. Please. <laughs> no? No, I mean, uh, uh, Joe has... <laughs> Joe has been tremendous, man. For me, he was more than, than a manager, like Jeter say. I mean, he was more uh, like a, a, a father to us. And, uh, you know, I mean, the respect that I got from him and, and the support, I mean, especially myself, you know, in, in 95, well, 97, when I started being the closer, and uh, I was blowing save left and right. Yes, you were. You know, and uh, he was there for me, though, you know, so I mean, uh, it was amazing, so I mean, uh, well deserved. Andy, a, a Joe Torre story, or yeah, just as, you know, the same as as these guys have been saying. Just uh, not only a great manager, a great communicator, uh, but just a, a friend to us all, also. And obviously, all the success we were able to have so early in our career, and Joe obviously was a big part of that. He was there, so he trusted us through the years after. Uh, you know, 96, I think, and, um, you know, he was just special, real special to all of us, I know that, and, and, and I know we all are just uh, so excited for him. Okay, I mean, first thing, we, first of all, Derek, you look phenomenal. I mean, you look like, like, like you're 30 years old. Thank you. He's only I'm saying that because he's fishing for his own compliment. I was just going <laughs> to see how this foot is here. I mean, I have to. My brother's got to ask, how, how is the foot? It's good, it's fine, it's, it's, everything's perfect. Could we race right now, or could you run and everything, or not yet? No, I could have raced you in a boot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, what, <laughs> what's going on these days for you? You kind of like drifted out of, out of sight a little bit there. Just Johnny Walker Black, obviously I was kidding around <laughs> with you there, but what, what's going on, what's important for you these days? Uh, hanging out with the kids, hanging out with the family, being Mr. Mom. I, uh, you coach? I help out at, the, at my kids' uh, team. Uh, but I want him to do his own thing. I want him to understand that I'm always there. But, you know, I don't want to be, you know, in the, in the coach's uh, way. Uh, so I try to stay away and I sit and far, far, and, and watch him. Uh, he plays outfield, so I sit out there. And I, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy being at home. We miss you. Thank you. We miss you. I mean, you can, we all can say we miss you. I mean, geez. But, um, what's important for you these days? I know turn two is always your foundation. And you started in 96. is always a priority around this time of year. Uh, but what's, what's, what's going on for you these days? How much is the rehab versus the the balance of all the things you have to do? Well, I mean, it, it's not rehab anymore. Now it's just getting ready to play. Um, so I did, <clears throat> I did my rehab work. Um, now I'm back to a normal off season and got to get ready for the season. But that pretty much consumes all my time. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned my foundation. 
foundation that started a few years back, and, and it's always a special time for us as a foundation, the holidays, and um, we look forward to that as a family. But I was just joking with these guys or talking with these guys about none of them are working out right now. You know, I'm the only one that's still playing, so uh, I got to get back to work. These guys are unemployed. <laughs> You've been busy, Mariana. <laughs> You've you been busy. Um, how do you feel? I mean, I gotta ask, first thing, just between us, no, just, is there a chance that maybe you come back? I was talking to Andy. I was talking to Andy, and uh, we decided not to come back. <laughs> now, you got something important going on, though, kidding aside right now, that you're doing a lot of work at this time of year. So I know you're always out delivering gifts. You're a do-it-yourself guy, so you're out there delivering gifts and, and, and working with your foundation. Tell me what's going on right now. And you seem pretty driven these days uh, about helping others. Well, I mean, uh, and that, that's, that's what I love, though. You know what I mean? I've been helped and I've been blessed uh, the minute I got here to the United States, you know, so I mean, and now that I'm not playing baseball no more, you know, I mean, I'm an employee, yeah, like Derry says, you know, so I mean, I'm okay with that one, though, I mean, I'm good, so, but uh, just helping, you know, I mean, uh, we're trying to open the church as quick as possible, because we need a lot of people to go to church, you know, and be safe, but uh, 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 besides that, helping in the community, you know, I mean, being all kind of uh, activities, around the New Rochelle area, you know, and, and, and that's what I love. So, I mean, just can't wait to get in New Rochelle and start working for the Lord. You're here all year, you're here all year round, right, pretty much? Yeah, well, I, I live here. You're here. Yeah. Uh, Andy. 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 Now, you got your son at uh, playing college baseball? Yeah. Yeah, just, you know, hanging out with the family, just trying to spend time with them. Uh, my oldest boy is is playing baseball at Baylor, so making some trips to Waco uh, to see him uh, see him play, seeing a little bit of football, Baylor football. Got to be a Baylor football fan now that he's there. Um, and then just hanging out with the family, man. Really, that's it. Just trying to relax. And, uh, and you know, right now, it's, it's a normal off season. You know, I think for, and I've already went through this once in 2011, but once the season starts cranking up, spring training, guys start going, that's when you kind of, you know, you start missing it and you realize, man, I, you know, I'm retired, you know. I just got to, I got to change direction. When you're on the mound, I just got, who, who are you talking to? Who just, are you talking yeah, to? I mean, just, I, you I know, just the guys, you know, guys kind of have a joke. They've, they've named whoever <laughs> I'm talking to Lloyd. Uh, so, <laughs> the, the, uh, but really it's, I'm talking to myself. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> you know, verbally beating myself up to try to motivate myself to do something good out on the mound whenever it's going bad. So it's just a little something that, I don't know, I feel like it helps me, but maybe it doesn't. But uh, if, I guess if you think it does, then maybe it does. There you go. The common I, thread probably up here, I mean, I don't know if there's four more competitive individuals, ball players than the four of you. Um, you know, I haven't kind of watched it from a little bit of afar and a little bit up close. I mean, you guys, you guys want to win. Tell me a little bit about George, about his competitive spirit, and a little bit about the way he goes went about his business. Well, Jorge was is uh, very intense. You know, he he he's day in and day out. You know, he's he exemplifies the catcher. You know what I mean? He's in there. He's in every pitch. Um, he expects a lot out of himself. He expects a lot out of the pitching staff. He expects a lot out of the team. And, uh, you know, he really sets the tone for intensity. Is it true that Mariana would hold kind of court in the clubhouse when things weren't going well? Would he bring you guys in and lecture you guys a little bit? Mo? Yeah. <laughs> he's always lecturing. Yeah, he, he's lecturing. I don't know who's listening, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's lecturing a lot. He's preaching. I think that's yeah. the best way to put it. Mo's the preacher. <laughs> but... Tell me a little bit about him. Tell me a little bit about where, where, what would happen with him in, in, when things got kind of tight, playoffs, World Series, what kind of? Listen, I think everybody up here, I mean, to be quite honest with you, they have the same demeanor, whether it's 
game in spring training or the World Series. I think that's, that's why we've been able to play here for this long, especially in New York, is, is we, don't, we don't treat anything differently. Um, every game is important. You know, you always ask, uh, you know, you see guys playing in the World Series and they talk about how important it is. Well, it's not any more important than any other game you play. If you, if you say it's more important, then you didn't care about the other ones. But every time we took the field, we wanted to win. That's the only thing that was on our mind. Did you ever think the four of you would have this kind of run, Mo? You know, the, the run uh, of this core four, the five championships, you all kind of started off at the same time? Well, I definitely didn't, didn't have the... Uh, I don't think that we're going to have this kind of run. You know what I mean? We know that... I know that we were good. I know that. It's a fact. You know what I mean? I saw these guys playing with each other in the minor leagues, and uh, I mean... Uh, we knew that we were something special. I knew that this was something special, but I didn't know the capacity, you know, how far we can go. We know we have the hungry. We, we know that we were uh, able to compete. As far as this, I didn't know, you know, but I, I knew that uh, it was something special. What was going on in your mind that day when both of you got sent back, sent down? Oh, my God, I was destroyed. <laughs> I was looking at Derek, and I'm like, my God, we're going back to AAA. Man, you guys don't this. You guys... Columbus, Columbus. Why, it was happened? because Louis Soho took me deep, <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was more hurt because that than they sent me down. I said I almost retired back then. <laughs> Louis Soho took me deep, you know. Not good. Oh my God, I heard I heard that for my whole career. Every day, we were talking about. Oh, I took you deep. Remember, I took you deep. Oh man. But it was sad, it was sad, it was sad. But you know what, uh, I, think, I think it was the best thing that happened. I can talk about him, but I can talk for me. It was the best thing that happened. You know, because I got down there and I worked hard and um, came back strong and, and my shoulder was messed up too. So I was able to uh, recuperate from that and, uh, and got stronger. Andy, what does it mean to be a Yankee? What's, what's, what's it meant to you know, be able to play almost your entire career as a Yankee? I mean, it's special. There's, there's no doubt. Just a tradition. Um, obviously, I, I left, uh, you know, for three years. Um, but it was so special, you know, to me, um, you know, that I wanted to come back. And you can't replace New York. You know, there's just no way to replace this. There's, there's, there's no way to replace the energy, uh, the excitement, um, the intensity. That, that the fans, you know, bring bring to the stadium. You just you can't replace that anywhere else. Uh, and obviously, when you come up in the organization again, when you when you uh, you know are just around it, when 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 they're bringing guys in, uh, you know, the old players. When we first came up, when it, whenever you see Yogi coming in and Whitey coming in, uh, Joe DiMaggio, uh, huh? Yeah. That's you three. That's us right now, huh? Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. But it, it's 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 just special. There, there's no there's no place like it, and, um, and and you know that's that's why it's just been so exciting to be able to see us be able to be on this run and strive, uh, you know, do what we did here. It just made it even more special. Hey, gee, but I would tell you what though. Yeah, we, we'll be out, but you'll be calling us. <laughs> oh, well, guys, come on, help. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Brandon, I think just, to, just because I feel like it needs to be said, because I know about these guys, you know, when you were asking about, you know, situations or, or how, did, you know, the success comes about out there, and, and Derek started talking about what he did. But I think all of us, too, you know, not one time did, did I ever think that, any of us were scared of the moment um, as far as in the postseason and, and those big games and stuff like that. And I think that, that a lot of that, a lot, sometimes a lot of failure comes from a lot of players because it's, it, you almost get too overwhelmed by the moment. But I can tell you right now, I mean, when the game's on the line, I mean, Derek wants to be up to bat and, and Mo wants to be closing that game out or Georgie wants to be up, up to bat. And, all, th all three of these guys, if somebody asked me who would I want up, you know, I would go to those two guys right there, you know. And those are the first two I'd say. 
Uh, who do you want the ball in their hand? This guy right here. Out of all the players that I played with, you know, and it's just that's what's made them so special. You know, is they they love the moment. <laughs> what what is there something? Is there something you do to prepare for that to get yourself emotionally so stable and 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 ready for these kind of big moments? Because he never. I mean, he looks like he's walking out to the mound. It's bottom, it's bottom of the ninth game on the line. Never seen it. I mean, it's the playoff, though. I mean. Uh, just the name alone says it all. Says it all. You know. I mean, uh, you don't have time to be in the playoff too often. You know, I have seen uh, Hall of Famers that never had the opportunity to be in the, uh, especially in the World Series. You know. So I mean, um, that alone, you had to be able to, uh, to, to be ready for that kind of game. But what's your secret? You know? what's it your was secret? no secret. You know. I mean, uh, the help of the Lord. It's the Lord alone. For me. I mean. I mean, I'm going there, and I trust in the Lord. You know, and, you know, just enjoy. Are you in such a thing as like a zone? Do you guys, you know, talk about this zone and being able to block things out? Are you really truly able to do that? Well, he was, yeah. he was, he was amazing. You know, he was. I mean, he, besides, he's talking to the little man that he has in the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the little he man on the shoulder? He was amazing. Huh? I don't know, but oh. some was the exchange personalities. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, he was. The, the best doing that. You know, it started with, it started with him. Everything is that with him. And Georgie had him going, you know. <laughs> I think for all of us, though, it's just, we had so many opportunities so young in our career to be in those moments or to have, you know, those big moments. I know for me, when, when I got to start, you know, I, obviously I started to play off games in 95, but when I got to start uh, in 96, game one of the World Series. I'll, I'll never forget. For me, after that game, I, I reevaluate that game, and I'm like, that was when a moment for me, it kind of overtook me. Like, like, I can't even remember, you know, what I was doing out there. I mean, my focus mentally, that was where I, it, it, was, it was bad for me, you know? And I, I, don't, I don't really feel like that mentally I was where I needed to be. Well, I learned from that, you know what I'm saying? And then so we continued to continue to make all these postseason runs and getting in big games to get us. And I think for all of us, you know, it, it didn't just come natural for me. I, it, I had to learn how to deal with it. It may have been different for the other guys here. It, I, I mean, you know, they may be wrong, but I, I feel like these guys, especially Jeet and Mo, uh, and I've said it before, they make the game look so easy. And, and uh, obviously, first ballot Hall of Fame players, these two guys, I never, I feel like I never saw them fail in those moments hardly, you know? So it's just pretty, it, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to watch. Jorge, you're pretty good under pressure too, especially in big games. Um, any particular thing that, you know, what was your mindset that you'd enable you to, hit, to get those big hits in Boston? And, you know, you always came up big and you always seem to be in big situations. And Yeah, I think it's more as a catcher, you prepare and you go through a game plan and that helps you during the game. The preparation, you know, you've done it before. Uh, so it was more about, you know, how, what have you done against the certain pitcher and what have you done against a certain hitter? I know how to get him out. I got to throw this pitch. I can't miss location. I got to, so I got to do that when, uh, let's say Andy's pitching and I don't, he doesn't have his curveball or he doesn't have his fastball inside. So I have to get him to get there. So I can't stay away from not him throwing a curveball. I just got to get him to throw his curveball in, in particular spots so he doesn't get hurt. So I got to get that curveball back. Uh, and it's all about feel. Uh, and he was a fastball inside guy against a right-hander, a cutter inside. And then I would throw the cutter trying to slow people down. Uh, it, it was more about preparation. Uh, you know, certain, certain pitchers facing Pedro Martinez, what he did against me before that helped me understand what he was trying to do especially in this series. And, and a, lot, a lot had to do with it also with the catcher you were facing. Uh, you know, I watch a lot of film on how they, you know, if Pedro was pitching to Jason Veritek, uh, how they were pitching me, and that kind of helped me a little bit. Derek, I know it's been a while since you played, so if you can remember, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Some things you don't even respond to, you know what I mean? <laughs> if I were to guess, if you were to guess, how many more years you're going to play? 
So everybody wants an out. And <laughs> I mean, can we see? Is it is it conceivable for you to play four, five, six more years? No, I don't, oh I don't try to tell the future. I, I really don't. I, I focus on coming one year at a time. My focus now is to get ready for 2014, and it, it's, that's that's it. Okay. And on your, would you say your health is on track? Would you say you're on track? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll tell you, I'm, Feeling I'm good? fine. Yeah, everything's good. Everything's okay. good. Go. Are you run? sure? <laughs> You know you all want to know that. Come on. <laughs> well, we're worried. You know, I was listening to the radio on the way in. I was like, geez, oh, you, know, you, get, you, you kind of panic. It's panic radio. I want to make sure you're OK. Um, in 2000, <laughs> in 2000, talk to me about that year, special year for you. <clears throat> you know, you had the Subway Series. First of all, did that, was that a little bit over? Was, I know you like to take every game, one game. But that Subway Series was a lot of pressure or not so much? It was fun. I think, you know, it's, 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 if you think about it, everyone always talks about pressure, pressure, pressure. But if you're not thinking about yourself, you're thinking about how you can help the team win and you think about wins and losses, I think it takes a lot of that pressure off. I mean, I, I don't ever go into a game saying I need to get two hits, three hits, four hits. I think every, Except every 3,000 hit game. Yeah, true. But, Exception, maybe. but um, my focus is always on what I can do in a particular situation to try to help us win. Uh, I think that removes a lot of pressure from you. Uh, I've always been uncomfortable when things have been about me. Uh, I'd rather talk about the team than talk about myself. Um, but 2000, yeah, 2000 was special. It was a special year for all of us. You know, it's, it's to play the Mets in the World Series and all eyes of New York City. I've said it before jokingly that if we'd have lost that series, I would have had to move out of Manhattan. So um, fortunately, we were able to win. I, I've been able to live in Manhattan for a long, long time, you know? <laughs> when was the first time you noticed that with Mariano? When was the first time you noticed that it's gonna be, it, he's, gonna be, he's gonna be trouble? He's gonna be an, an unbelievable closer? Uh, well, closer, no. I, you know, when Mo came up, he was a starter. So, you know, we were in the minor leagues and he was coming off of elbow surgery and we played together. And the first year we played together was 1992. Um, you know, I was 18 year old shortstop. Mo was a 29 year old starter, and he. <laughs> he's coming. <laughs> he's coming out of surgery, and he was on a pitch count. And you know, Mo would tell you, I I'd stand it short and count his pitches. And I'd run him to the mound and say, Listen, man, you you've thrown 35 pitches. You only had 15 more. How can you make this last another two or three innings? So. Um, that's the most the first memories that I've had with, with Mo was him as a starter. You knew he was special. Uh, you know everyone has talent once you get to the professional level. Uh, I think what separates good players and great players is their mindset. And you know Mo's Mo's as strong as anyone mentally. We were talking about Bernie Williams the other day. First of all, could you have played center field as a professional? Could you yeah, have played I center field? Could have played Yeah, I no doubt about that. You know, he want to play me. Houston last this year. I said, come on, I don't want to play now. You know? If you would have played about me it? 15 years ago. Did you think about playing in Houston? No, I didn't think about it at all. I told him no. He wanted to play me. I said no. Really? Yeah, I was upset. He's the worst, too. He'd be, was on, he'd, he'd be on the mound, and, and uh, you know, he'd go out there and shag in the outfield BP. And every time a ball would drop. He'd come to me between innings. He's like, how come you didn't catch that? I would have catched that. I would have caught that. I had it. I had it. You didn't catch it. What, what is he doing out there? So it was fun. So he, in his mind, he thinks he can play center field. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, man. Talking about Bernie? We're talking about Bernie. We're, you know, the core five. We just reinvented this group. The core five with Bernie. It's two Bernies, though. It was two Bernies. <laughs> It was two Bernies. I take the Bernie that always show up to play. You know, the one, because sometimes Bernie was, the second Bernie was sleepy all the time. You know, because he don't know where he was, he, you know, so, but Bernie was special. I mean, I saw Bernie when Bernie was playing at his level and his mind into the game. It was no one better than Bernie. I mean, it was no one better than Bernie. I mean, getting to the balls, Throwing and he had no good arm at all, but he can <laughs> throw some ones and, and, and do something special. I mean, I'm telling you, the man was special really? when he was on his game. But sometimes, man, Bernie wasn't just near the stadium. You know, and those are the days that it was tough. 
You know, Bernie, are you there? <laughs> Bernie wasn't there. You know, messy. Bernie was messy, man. Shoot, yeah. Oh man. Bernie, Bernie would be. Bernie would sleep up until 15 Six minutes, 50? 10 minutes before game time. This is, I'm not making this up. I mean, it's, it's. And he'd run out. He'd get out. He'd, he'd have his shower shoes on and his shorts. He's knocked out, cold. Didn't take BP. He'd get dressed real quick. He'd run out in the field every time. And he'd look in the stands like he had no idea where he was. <laughs> yeah. If you look at old video, watch when Bernie comes out. He's just looking around. He has he's no looking idea. All up in the yeah, stands. he's looking all up like yeah. he has no idea. Bernie, you're on deck, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zimmer. Another very important part of the piece. We haven't talked much about Don. Uh, what was he like? What was Zimmer like? And, and how much of an addition was? Was he in the uh, in the dugout? What kind of what kind of addition was he? Well, these guys can talk better than him because he was in the bullpen. So uh, I didn't have Ooh. Zimmer with me in the bullpen. Zimmer. Zimmer. Oh, Zim. Oh. You want to talk about him? Zim when uh, we always had good stories when it was rained out. When there was a rain delay, you had to sit around Zimmer because he would tell you stories about 1950s and <laughs> Jackie Robinson and. Uh, Getting hit in the head. Uh, yeah, getting hit in the head all the time. He always got hit in the head. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I think he, he's got magnets or something up there because he will always get hit in the head. Uh, but Zim is a great, he was, uh, nothing will get by and he would be on Joe Torres' ear about, especially when we went interleague, like double switches and uh, super mind. I mean, brilliant uh, on moves and, and you know, peeping bringing a guy in, you know, he was, he was really special. Uh, you don't talk much about him, but he was, uh, he helped us a lot. Zim, Zim could explode like no one else. Yes. Too. <laughs> red. I mean, he would get really red. <laughs> Once a game, he would go off. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was enjoyable to watch. That's for sure. Oh it was entertaining. <laughs> Remember the time that uh, we were in Minnesota? <laughs> And the guy told him, I, I think it was Al, the umpire. He says, hey, Simmer, you in trucks or something? <laughs> <laughs> they throw him out. <laughs> oh, my, I mean, Zimmer was, I mean, to be around Zimmer was just, you know, it's, it's like encyclopedia, you know, like a Bible. It just has so much knowledge about baseball. And not only him, but, you know, we have, we have uh, Mel, you know, uh, Willie, Jose Cardinal. You know, we are those guys, but, uh, but uh, it was Willie, amazing. by the way, said he had a pretty profound effect on your career. Who? Willie Randolph. Yeah, he's been, yeah, well, when, when things are going good, he had a good effect on my career. <laughs> Then, the thing is going bad, Willie's nowhere to be found. Where's Willow? Hey, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Still trying to send somebody home at third. Sit down. <laughs> no, you know, I mean, really, if you think about it, I helped Willie keep his job. On the, and I mean, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Because Willow was the third base coach. So, I always considered myself a pretty good base runner, so, but I had to make up for my guy sitting here to the right. So, am I right now, Willie? Willie, you've been fired a long time ago. If I didn't help you out. <laughs> uh, it was hard, it was Georgie, man. We low. I'll say nothing. No, but in all honesty, I mean, we, 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 are, we are very fortunate in our organization to have all these great players. I, I can't really see, that's why I can't even see your face, Willie, but I see Goose over there, and Nettles I saw earlier, and um, Roy White, I don't know who else is here because I, I can't see Reggie. But we're fortunate because, you know, we get spoiled. I mean, we get, have access to these players um, pretty much on a daily basis. They're in and out of the stadiums. We came up, all of our coaching staff were ex-major league players. If you need help, you know who to go to. Now they're all phone call away. Um, and not too many organizations can say that. So we, we, we laugh and we joke, but uh, we've been very fortunate, and we wouldn't be here if we didn't have the help of all these guys. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> I hate to bring this up, but, you know, the old stadium, 
you know, the memories, like, do you miss it? I do. I do. I mean, we're, we're spoiled. The amenities, the facility, the new Yankee Stadium, I mean, it's second to none. But, um, you know, we played so long in the old stadium. The fans were right on top of you. It was, it was very intimidating. Um, we really had home field advantage there. Uh, now the new stadium spread out a little bit more, which makes it more comfortable for the fans and the players as well. So I like both of them. But, um, you know, it's your first. So it's like a first girlfriend, you know what I mean? You never forget it. <laughs> I mean, did you ever think, I just, I, we got to change direction on that, that can just, we don't want to go there, but. And hey, where are you guys' minds? I don't know, everyone's minds. You, you don't want to know that either. <laughs> um, did you ever think that Mariana was going to go out this way? Did it surprise you? Because he's this quiet, skinny little kid from Panama. All of a sudden, he's on a road show. He's like a rock and roll star. <laughs> you know, getting gifts, ceremonies. Did that surprise you? And, and how happy for him were you? Well, no, I'm not surprised because, you know, for years he was telling me and Jorge and, and Andy said, I just don't get enough attention. And when I, <laughs> you know, when I, when I decide to hang him up, I want to go on this whole tour and get all the necessary attention. Uh, but no, I mean, if you think about it, uh, you know, Mo's job is it's, it's, it's tough enough job. Goose, you know as well. Um, closers roll, the only time the media talks to you is when you blow a save. And for both of these guys, Goose and Mo, they didn't talk to him very much because they didn't blow a lot of saves. And, you know, I, I thought it was great that he, he got the opportunity to go around and get the attention that's, that's well-deserved. And, and, you know, he, he knows how the organization feels about him, how us as teammates feel about him. And he had an opportunity to see how baseball fans in general feel about him. Did you enjoy that, your road show? Did you, you, you able to embrace that, all the moments and the love and the... And the that's the lack of hair that you've caused me. All the hair I've lost because of you. Driving me crazy over this year. But did you enjoy yourself? I, and, I, are you content with what transpired over the last nine, ten months? I love it. You know, it was, in, it was, it was a lot of job, though, a lot of work. A lot of work. But uh, in the mix of that, it was a lot of satisfaction, too. You know, knowing what the fans think about yourself knowing what they think about the game of baseball, you know, I mean, uh, you got to know them closer, you know, not only the ones that are around you on the field, but those ones behind the scene that no one sees, you know, that you were able to say thanks to those ones that, that do little things, but still, they're doing something for baseball, you know, and I was so grateful that I did that, and I, I was so content and enjoyable because I did enjoy it. What's amazing is that, I mean, you were everywhere, and almost all the money and everything you had made from licensing and everything else went to your foundation and went to, you know, helping build the church. Yes. I mean, uh, what, uh, right? Again, yeah. again, you know, I mean, uh, the Lord have blessed me in an amazing way. <laughs> is, am I missing something? Or? <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what well, uh, I mean, these guys, yeah. these guys, uh, these guys are terrible, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, you guys have to understand, I'm the oldest in here, right? So you have to respect this, all right? When you have referred we, to we me, you, you, I always tell you, you that. Oldest. We know you're the oldest. Exactly. You guys know that. So, I mean, uh, just making sure. <laughs> All right. So, I um, mean, uh, uh, no, but it's amazing, though. It was amazing. I mean, giving back, that's, that's what it is all about, you know, man. Just give back to the community, give back. You know, I've been blessed. I've been blessed, and I, I always say I'm a blessed man. You know, so, I mean, I just give back. I, I love that. Andy, you kind of snuck out there at the end. Is that how you always have pictured it? <laughs> Kind of, you know, kind of going out a little bit quietly and then getting your last chance to say goodbye or well, it's the second time going out. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Obviously, when I retired after 2010, you know, I, I thought that was, you know, I thought that was it, you know, and and so I never really got a chance to say like, you know, thanks to the fans or goodbye. I think I I might have did a radio interview with with uh, you know with Michael K. Or, or something like that, um, but you know, I had told Derek and 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 uh, Mo probably around the middle of the season, you know, that I was planning on retiring, and I, I didn't I didn't tell anybody, you know, my my wife knew and and a few other people maybe, 
but I had just let them know because I wanted them to know. And, uh, and then, that, you know, Mo started telling me, you know, we talked a little bit. He continued to talk about it. And, and, and he had told me that he thought that I ought to say something, you know, that I ought to let the fans know where I could at least, you know, tip my hat. And for me, when, when also our public relations guy, I had mentioned it to him, Jason Zillow, and he had told me that he thought that I definitely had to do something. And so, uh, you know, I'm just so glad I did, just to have the opportunity to, to thank the fans because they've been so, they've been so great to, to me, I know to all of us. Uh, we've been through, through so much, you know, and um, you, you just you, you appreciate the support. And uh, I, I appreciate, I've appreciated, you know, and I know the other guys are the same probably, just over your career when, when, when times do get rough and you're struggling, you know, they can be hard on you also, but you know what, that made me drive myself even more to try to be as great as I could, you know. So for me, I didn't look at it as a negative. I looked at it as a positive and tried to feed off of that. So uh, like I said, this, this place is, I think, really probably New York has, has, has turned us in to the ball players and the athletes that we are just because, uh, you know, the, the energy that we get from them and, the, and, and just, you know, that desire even grows, you know, to be successful. But on a scale of one to ten, a hundred being there's no way you're coming back, and one, you are coming back. Where, where, where do you sit on all that? Yeah, I'm not coming back. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm done. Yeah, you know, when, when I retired the first time, I, I, I was done, and I thought I was done physically also. But I, I realize now more than anything I was done, uh, I was done mentally. And, and these guys can tell you too. I, I know I talked to G, I talked to Mo. Probably several years before I retired, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm burnt out here. I, I mean, I feel like I'm gassed. I need to, you know, shut it down. And for me, my family was in Houston, so every off day I was having to fly home, and then fly the same day and meet the team. Uh, it, it just took a wear and tear on my body. And so now I know, physically, to compete compete at the level that I want to, I'm done. I mean, I can't do it. I can't do it with my family back in Texas and travel the way I have to. And and so that's it's a complete different feel for me, you know, this time than last time for sure. Okay, okay, there you have it. Jorge, tell me about the most fun, the most fun do you remember having with these guys here? Well, winning sticks out, uh, <laughs> but we, you know, talking about the clubhouse and the things that we did in the clubhouse, uh, we were able to mess around like we mess around, but obviously closed doors, nobody there. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot more uh, uh, realistic and, uh, you know, when nobody's there, we, we get on each other a lot and we, uh, we're tough on each other a lot. And, and I, I think we can able, able I, I have never been mad and on any of these guys, and that's really, really tough to, because you know where they're, where they're going, where they're, how they think, and you know how, you know, they felt, and how much they care about the game, and that's one of those things that, that sticks out. But it, it's been fun for, you know, I know Andy since '91, Mariano since '91, and Derek since '92. So I have never been mad at any of them, and it's always been fun. Never. Never. Any regrets? When you look back at your career, any there's regrets? No, anything you would have done differently? Uh, there's things, but you grow from those things, and I don't have any, any regrets. No, uh, because it's it's who you are, you know, and, and you you gotta learn and live with it. Yeah, we haven't talked about Tino Martinez, also. Let's give him a, a Tino. One of your good friends. Mm -hmm. How big a part of this whole could be the core six, really? Throw him in there. How big? How big a part of the success was he? You just, you just a businessman, huh? <laughs> he's a businessman. Now he's turning to the core five, the core six. He's just trying to get more money <laughs> from everybody. What's amazing is you guys are like, like that. That's all good for you guys too. You know, just we all get together that much more often. No, Tino. Tino lives down the street from me in Florida. Um, he's very, Tino is, Tino is, is very, very intense. The Jeter compound. Very, very intense. Um, I just lost my train of thought, Brandon. <laughs>
yeah. talking about Tino, how I intense he is. <laughs> I was going to say something that really Moving wasn't appropriate. Uh, yeah, Tino was very, very intense, and, and, and uh, you know, he fit right in with all of us. He was there through all those championships, and, um, you know, he's a guy that we missed when he left. Anything you want to say in closing remarks? Thank Final you. Thoughts? Thank you to the, the fans. I mean, for us, <clears throat> for us, you know, it's been special playing here in New York, but it wouldn't be near as special if we didn't have the, the greatest fans in the world. So we appreciate it. Excited about this season? I am looking forward to it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be awkward. I, I've never played a professional season without at least one of these guys. So this is, this is going to be the first time. Final thoughts, Mariana? Something you want to share? No, what I, what I wanted to say is just thank you. You know, thank you for the support. Thank you for being there. Thank you for the cheering. Thank you for the boobs. You know, those made me better. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you very much. Andy, close of thoughts? No, I mean, it's just special. Any, anytime uh, we have the opportunity, obviously, to get together with these three guys and see them, uh, see some of the other guys, other ball players, then uh, just to start thinking about baseball, you know, again, in the season coming up, it's going to be an exciting year. Um, you know, obviously we were putting together a good team. They're trying to put together a championship team. The Yankees are going to always do that because uh, they know the fans expect it. And so, but just for me personally, man, just again, like, like, the, like Mo said, just thank y'all so much for the years, the support. Uh, y'all made it so fun for us. So, so many great memories. Uh, for me, especially the last the last couple of weeks of the season, it was man. I just thank God so much. That was just such a, a blessing for me to be able to. If we weren't able to make it to the playoffs, obviously, which was devastating for us, but to be able to to, to end the season the way we did and and have some of the special moments that we had this year, it was extremely cool. And I feel very blessed to be part of it. And just uh, thank you guys. Uh, Jorge, closing thoughts. Anything you want to say? Okay. Yeah, uh, putting that uniform on uh, made me a better player, but I think the fans made me even better because I know how, how, how thoughtful and how well they knew the game. I think they made me uh, a better player, and I want to thank you guys because uh, Jorge Posada will always think of you guys. Thank you. Good luck this season, Derek. I want to thank uh, all you guys for our partnership and our relationship with Steiner Sports. You guys, without you guys, I don't know what we do. So thank you. And thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Safe home, and uh, we'll hopefully see you at our next event. Thank you.